I've been getting a lot of questions in the comments regarding bulk density, soil weight, and how that affects the outcome on a soil test. So when the lab is analyzing a soil test, they want to report the values in pounds per acre. And they're assuming that the average soil of an acre slice, 43,560 square feet, six inches deep, weighs two million pounds. And then they're using that two million pound acre slice value to anchor the results of all the other elements in the test because the soil test is simply a weight by weight comparison, the weight of the elements compared to the weight of the soil. So if you're not getting a bulk density value, the consequences can be pretty drastic and the variance of your soil from this assumed two million pound acre slice can be quite significant. And so we can still take this two million pound value and turn it into a bulk density. First, we need to get it onto kilograms. So we simply divide 2 million pounds by 2.2 to get us 909,090 kilograms. Now that our soil weight is on kilograms, it's easier to convert it into grams per cubic centimeter because that's what the bulk density value is. So if the volume of a six inch acre slice of soil is roughly 807 cubic yards, we can divide that kilogram acre slice weight by 807 and we get 1126.5 kilograms per cubic yard. Once we have the weight of our soil in a cubic yard, it's easy to translate it into cubic centimeters. So the bulk density of an acre slice is 1.47 grams um, per cubic centimeter. And if the average potting soils actually range somewhere from 0.12 to 0.65, and the lab is assuming that your data is based on a soil that has a weight of 1.47, this has two major consequences. One, your values are gonna be remarkably skewed on the test, and two, your amendment applications are gonna be completely incorrect. So here's a chart that explains what that would look like. So if we're trying to increase a given soil by 100 parts per million, of our three different bulk densities, so the 0.12, the low range of our potting soil, 0.65 at the high range of our potting soil, and the 1.47, which is what a native soil might or should be. So if we wanna increase calcium using oyster shell, that's 36% calcium, it's gonna take 26 grams of oyster shell for that lightest weight soil, on up to 313 grams for that heaviest native soil that they're making assumption. And so you can see pretty clearly, this is gonna be significant problem when you go to do your mineral recommendations for yourself. Same with potassium sulfate, that's 42% potassium. It's only gonna take 22 grams to increase at 100 parts per million in that lightest soil. And it's gonna take all the way up to 268 grams on that heaviest native soil. So this becomes complicated because most of the soils that I look at, they range somewhere around like a 0.2 to a 0.5 is a really common range. 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, those are really common potting soil ranges. Even when you get to a native soil, it's usually not as heavy as a 1.47. So even in the heavier soils that I see, there's still not that 2 million acre slice weight. And you know that can cause significant issues with your amending applications. If you're taking a generalized strategy of amending all your soils the same, Almost all farms have brought in soil at different times, and the bulk densities of those soils are often vastly different. So if you're mending all your soils in the same fashion, you're in for some problems. So anyways, I hope this helped, and uh, leave your uh, comments in the, in the comment section, and I'll uh, try to get to your questions. Thank you.